now call to order the regular meeting of the Lumberton Conservation Commission for April 10th, 2018. We are going to start with our continued hearings. Our first hearing is uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. It will be a public uh, meeting to consider a request for determination of Highland Manor to Realty Trust regarding the determination of a potential wetland area address 826 West Street, Map 514, Lot 8. Someone here representing the applicants. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Matt Morrow um, representing Highland Manor Realty Trust. Um, last weekend, uh, I walked with some members of the commission on the property. We took a look at some areas. And some of the flagging I had done was during a heavy part of the drought, which became pretty obvious when we saw what we saw. So when the notice of intent to be filed, I'll have areas reassessed and reflagged. And essentially, I'm not asking for any boundary certification. I'm simply just asking for a positive determination. I just, you know, I, I knew things were going to be different when the water came back, which it did. Thankfully, the water tables are pretty much back to normal, and I wanted you guys to take a look at it before we started finalizing anything. All right. Um, do the members that actually went on the site walk, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Um, have any comments or questions? Wasn't there. Yeah. Brad, did you? I was there. Um, I walked it. There are jurisdictional areas. There is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. You agree with that? Okay. Um, any comments, questions, or anything like that you would like to add? Um, a recommendation. Do you have the form with you? Have you looked at motion that we issue a positive determination of applicability for 826 West Street, um, noting that there are jurisdictional resource areas on the property and that the location of those has not been determined to be accurate. Okay. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second. All in favor? If I may on that, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Actually, the box on the form says the area is not certified. That's why I was asking if we had the form. So we'll, we'll, we'll look for the appropriate box to, yeah. to check, okay? Yeah, so yeah. you just, yeah, because we didn't want to certify any boundaries. So you just, right. That's the box we were looking for. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our next hearing. Um, Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. There will be a public meeting regarding the construction of a stone paver patio within the buffer zone of a perennial stream address, 258 Exchange Street, Lot 395, Lot 58, <coughs> Map 395, Lot 58, DEP file number 199-1063. Someone here representing the applicant. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Matt Morrow representing um, the applicant, Mr. James Barassi. Um, again, over the weekend, um, I had the good fortune of being able to walk it with members of the commission. Um, one of the suggestions on site that was made to me by a member was that in the area right adjacent to the patio, there was some area of exposed soil that we um, stabilize the soil and plants and shrubs. Okay. That's not an issue. Um, any members present at that site walk? I was not, unfortunately. Yeah, that's that's what was discussed. That was an area where they, instead of it like building, like they built like a little retaining wall out of sure. some uh, lumber and, and uh, one of the like a stake. Yeah, the stakes there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what they did is they they used a uh, a fallen tree. Okay. So there was just an area of erosion behind the tree. So they're just gonna like loam and seed it in a few trucks. Yeah. Right. Sure. So how the rest of the. Yeah, there was actually um, there's actually a deck right there too. So it kind of abuts the deck, and that whole area is stable. It's all stable in that wet area. Whole area. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else visit the site? I was there. Um, I, I guess I'll just add to that. 
uh, this, the site looked like it was a, a less rich than, let's say, the, the pictures we were photographed in the past. Okay. So um, the pictures had me concerned. Actually, viewing the site, I was a lot less concerned about it. Okay. I, th I think with the um, the addition of the consultant's recommendation for the plant, I'm comfortable with it. Okay. And if it's okay with the commission, we can have <coughs> proposed plant things after the order is issued, and I'll submit them to Angela for you guys to review. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience like to speak on this uh, second and third and final time? Uh, do I have a recommendation from either one of the members that viewed it and or Angela? Mr. Chairman, um, I make a motion we issue in order of conditions for 258 Exchange Street DEP file number 199-1063 with the special condition that the applicant shall submit to us a plant and plan for the exposed area immediately adjacent to the patio. Do I have a second on that motion? No, second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank if you very much. When you um, submit that plan, just notify Angela kind of after the fact so we can do kind of a follow-up visit to make sure it's planted? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, not a problem. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, pursuant to Master Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. There'll be a public hearing to consider a notice of intent by Ray Tech Construction, LLC, regarding the construction of a single-family home associated site grading within a 100-foot buffer zone of a wetland resource area Address 45 Overlook Drive, Lot 2, Map 480, Lot 921, DEP 199-1065. Angela, you said you had communications? Yes, I spoke to the contractor and I also spoke to the engineer. Um, either of them are available today and we have not done a site walk yet, so that they would like to continue it until April 24th. All right. This one will be continued to April 24th at 6 p.m. in this room. Our next hearing, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. It will be a public hearing to consider notice of intent by USA Auto Sales regarding site grading for used automobile storage area within Riverfront area in the associated 100-year floodplain at just 395 Central Street, map 384, lot 6 and 6A, DP 199-1067. Is there someone representing the applicant? Yes, my name is Anthony Cleese with Women and Associates here on behalf of the applicant. So if I can, for the last meeting, um, I believe that the, the items that were uh, given to, to take care of one was to have a site walk, uh, which, which we did have one. The other one was to further delineate wetlands and high water um, in and around the, the project. So just to, this was the, the plan you guys have seen before, colored up, again, to refresh ourselves. It's an existing gravel area, an existing buildings and pavement up in here. And so the intent is to resurface this gravel area with um, uh, crushed up concrete, recycled concrete. And the green area here are existing gravel disturbed areas that the intent is to restore that, you know, you know bring it back to, to vegetated uh, areas. So um, we did go out and, and flag that um, just before the site walk that we had. And uh, I'm going to live in my 17s of this as well. By 17, really shrink it down. If I show some of the coloring. So, you can start with the wetland flags, uh, are highlighted in green. So I believe it was brought up a couple of meetings ago by one of the neighbors that you know, there was a, a wet area behind here. So, we had that area flagged, and it kind of comes and kind of wraps back around the project. 
And then once it gets to where the brook is, the, the wetlands and the mean annual high water kind of become the same. So that's the green there is the wetland line. The 100 foot buffer from that I've highlighted in yellow. So you can see how that um, goes into the property. And then we had some high water flags put up along um, the brook around there. Pretty consistent with what we had had uh, before. There was one flag kind of a little bit away from the actual delineation of the brook itself, but uh, it kind of seemed like that's where the mean annual would go. So get a little bit more of a, of a curvature to the riverfront. Didn't really change it too much that you could really tell. But the orange is the 100 foot inner and 200 foot outer riparian. The purple was a line we had on there as a 50 foot offset. Just another line to show you, you know, distance wise where we were from there. Uh, again, on this plan to, to point out, I highlighted the approximate flood uh, plain here in uh, pink. pink here. Um, so again, the intent is to you know, resurface that area, restore some of that existing disturbed areas uh, back to vegetation. Um, other additions to this plan here, as we were on the site walk walking along uh, the river, noticed that there was a, a pipe, an existing pipe discharge out through the slope out in here. We chased it back uh, as part of the site walk. We, we did some investigation and then we had a field crews back out there and found that this pipe comes out of a catch basin here. This catch basin ties into that catch basin and there are pipes coming into that catch basin. We couldn't figure out exactly where they were coming from, but as we've shown out the plan to, 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 to show that. that it's, sorry, it, that's all existing yep. currently. Okay. Yep. So we haven't made any updates to the plan or anything um, based on the site walk or any of this uh, information we want to do it comes to the commission if there's any added things we need to do, we'll discuss it tonight and hopefully um, resolve any, any else that you may really have. Um, again, I'll ask the uh, members that were on the site walk, I was not able to attend, if you'd like to comment or ask any questions further sure I think um, I was probably the only conservation commissioner here that's seen it so I guess um, first question I have is back to the catch basin comment Anthony yes the um, when we lifted the grade out there we saw a <coughs> pipe coming in there it looked like it was two inches or smaller yeah you weren't able to determine no I have no idea okay my plans no, have you maybe. approached the property owner next door? Next that? door, no. We okay. Done that. I think you need to do that. Um, I do get concerned with seeing something that size that you might have some type of a potential illicit discharge to us. Okay. Uh, it is a straight shot to the stream there. So I'd like you to put some more investigation into that, please. And that comes in, it looks like, from the neighboring property? Right, the uh, neighbor directly to the north. Okay. And yeah, it's a very, very small. Looks like a HDP pipe that comes in. Okay, all set. Then, um, <clears throat> you have a concern I had with the site. Do you know much about the history um, of what's happened in terms of the earth movement here? In particular, has there been anything before the commission here in the past 10, 15 years? Not that I'm aware of. I'm not sure. I think it, how long ago did you purchase the property? A year ago. A year and a half ago I purchased it. Yeah. So I, I think there was a contractor there before? No, but they used to park trucks and then uh, foundation trucks and stuff. It was a parking lot yeah. for trucks. Uh, I don't know if you know Gemini's, the construction company. Yeah. yeah. They used to park trucks in the back. Yeah, so, somewhere we're in history. Okay, so as as we walk the area um, towards the southerly portion of the property, I guess just just to the east of where you see wetland flags, one through five, that kind of area there. Um, that to me looks like that's all filled in BBW area. 
So when I started to, yeah, even not just what you have shaded, but even even beyond that, like, yeah. it actually you can you look at the areas, you can see that finger. I know I walked. I don't think you followed me all the way to the tip of that, but it goes beyond. Um, <clears throat> I started looking through ortho photos, and it looks like um, back in the mid 2000s there was a stream through there, and that was probably where the BBW was watering that too. And even out there um, last week, you can see areas where it's fighting to come back wetland where it wasn't completely filled in. You do have some wetland beds through there. So it looks like, unless there was a negative determination or an order of conditions at some point within the past 10, 15 years for that earthwork, it looks like that area is filled in resource area, which comes under the commission's jurisdiction. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed as part of the proposal for this parking area, it looks like you're proposing to restore that as riverfront. What I would suggest to do is rather than create it riverfront and restore it back to a BBW. So essentially remove this fill? I think it goes beyond that though. You'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to look at what's, again, I saw a pretty. Yeah, I, mean, I think it, we, we went to the edge of the gravel area, um, what we're showing as, as restoration. So you're thinking to, to go further into what's already established vegetation and go in and, and, and clear that out? And so you wanna, I got an image right here. Sure. You wanna take a look at that? So there was, there was a finger that looked like, you're kind of showing a little bit in yep. this area, yep. but there was an even bigger finger that's kind of between the trees that comes out there. And in some, some photos as you go through the history, you can even see trucks parked kind of back in this area. Back there. Yep. And then here's where, before it all got disturbed, you can kind of see the tributaries to this main perennial. Mm -hmm. And you've got one that kind of comes right through there as well. Kind of sneaks around. And this, this area in here, when you when you walk it, you can see that's where it's fighting to come back at this little that, that, that little pooling area yeah. that we walked yeah. around? Yeah, there, there was a monitoring well there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think where that's, where that so it's a great activity appears to have been, unless there's something issued from the commission, it was done illegally <coughs> at the time. Um, it's not really important to this particular project. You should, you should look to restoring that back to its actual better resource, which would be the BBW. Sure. Um, so if it, if it makes sense, I guess what we could we could do, we could kind of locate it at the bottom of slope. It does go a little bit beyond. This was the edge of the uh, gravel area. And then some of it's been vegetated, it appears, over time. Yeah. Um, go back to the bottom of slope, which is you know, right around elevation 350, which is about what these uh, wetland flags here. Here's the, here's the 350 line and 350 in here. We could pull that back and bring the slope, bring that slope back in here. So we have an elevation of 350 kind of all in through there. Do you, do you think that might? Yeah, I would I would say from the limit from the limit of your work, go down you know three to one to get to the grade that you need for the DBW. Right. Yeah. And then we just. Yep. And yeah. then um, also just kind of stake that envelope in the field. Uh, use something other than the pink flags that are out there, so we can know what the difference is, and just kind of let us walk it ahead of time and see what it would look like too. Like during construction? No, before before we we close. Actually, I'm just I'd like I'd like to see. That what matches on the plan is kind of what I envision in the field is what's what's the disturbed area. Okay, so if I can, what do you want us to flag? The limit of the, the material that you'd be pulling out of there. Which is so beyond the gravel. So if it's if it's what's on the plan, and I'm not certain that's what it is, then, then show that. But it shows something in the field so that that matches the plan, so that we can agree on the area. Okay. Is mainly what I want to. Okay. So, see. Yeah. All right, so, flag, so flag an area so, of restoration to basically pull that earth back yeah. and then show that on the plan. Right. So you think of the elevation of the wetland is like 350? Yeah, that's kind of you know, what it is <coughs> up in here. Um, so just bring the slope. I'm just trying so, to get my head. Yeah, so, so just kind of like you just like this is what I mentioned. We kind of take our our limit of of um, the parking area, right? Transition down three to one to the three fifty oh. to the three fifty, and then, and then it's all 
put yeah. it comes with these uh, 350 right right in. So, okay. um, when they get that consistent elevation that in, in time it may, come back. It may take. Because yeah. yeah. your plan was to obviously just uh, boom and seed or, or right. grass just, that gravel yeah. area. So. Exactly, yeah, we weren't planning on, so just on going those. in and, 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 and moving and in and that area out. Uh, <coughs> just kind of you know, pulling back some of the existing gravel area and, and restoring that. So this is something that I guess I'm it's looking like we're going to have to continue the meeting again in order to to achieve this. Flag so we can look at it. Well, I, I have some other questions yeah. too. I mean, there may be some other things so we'll have to. Excuse me, just shut this off. This keeps coming. Um, <clears throat> the other question I have. Because of the looking looking through the orthos and seeing the history of the site, I'm just concerned that the same thing can happen in the future, that things just encroach and expand beyond the limits that were there. The um, the, the hatched area that you're showing, that shaded area, you're proposing the meadow mix. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see more woody material in there rather than just the metal type stuff. Um, that would at least give it some sort of a barrier to further encroach and go beyond those limits too. Or alternatively, some type of a fencing system or something that goes around the limit of the parking lot, um, just so we know that things don't expand. Um, you know, it, it, I've seen auction sites and things of that nature in the past that have large gravel parking areas that, you know, with the blink of an eye, the owners wanted to expand and just kind of did it without notifying anyone. So yeah. something, something that would make it challenging to just. Go ahead and expand without coming back to somebody for it. So some kind of a, of a visual visual notation in some fashion, kind of around the perimeter of the entire area. Yeah. You so I, th I think I think the woody material would be better than a metal there anyway. So. <clears throat> that means anything planting trees? No, not necessarily trees, but you know shrubs or something that would make it so that. You wouldn't immediately want to go in there with more yeah. vehicles or something yeah. of that nature, yeah. or even something even boulders or, or something. Boulders well, could work but, too. But basically, yeah. something some kind I, of a I've, visual. I've seen that yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One thing I just want to bring up on the word boulder: um, the conservation commission got burned on the word boulder. Um, <laughs> if you don't clearly define what a boulder is, a boulder is around rock. So if you don't actually define the size, we had somebody just put these little rocks like that big. Well, there is an ASTM spec. There is an ASTM for an actual boulder. So you can't yes. claim something like that yeah. as a boulder. So right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It, <laughs> what what you were holding up is probably going to be cobble when you right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But they, they were very small rocks that. Right. Um, it got into this big argument. Should have pushed what, back on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So you're, th you're thinking <coughs> all the way around the entire that section. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I think at the last meeting we discussed that your snow storage would be towards the west, up closer yep. towards. Yep. yep. So I, I just like to see that that area doesn't get disturbed once once this project is constructed. And I, th I think I asked you too, and you weren't sure about whether the stormwater management report was done that was asked for in the comment letter from DEP. I don't think I've seen that in the materials that were given to us through email correspondence. Yeah. I think I saw the Hydrocat analysis that your office did, but I didn't see the DEP report form checklist. I can I'll check and if you don't have it, we'll, we'll, we'll have one uh, forwarded. I think on this one there was wasn't much to it, you know, as we're reducing areas of disturbance from adding an impervious surface, things like that. You do have the MEP standard that you want to look at, though. So any any improvements you can make to what's there, um, you should consider. You know, particularly when we walk the site. Granted, you're not. I don't think you're going to have gravel there in the future, but that basin that we looked at 
you know, had a few inches of gravel right, right on it, you know where that's ending up. It was yeah. a straight shot to the brook. Yeah. So you should clearly look at everything that's there. Um, anything that can be improved under the MEP standard, go ahead and, and make suggestions there. And certainly take credit for what you're um, proposing around the building too. I mean, even though that's beyond riverfront, beyond buffer zone, you, you can still use that as, as credit towards meeting the MEP requirement, I think. As was, um, I think mentioned before, we were uh, the, through the planning board review process. The DPW wanted us to try and add some infiltration to the project uh, to accommodate some of the, the impervious surface that was up in this area. Um, you know, after we walked the, the site um, that day and, and kind of noticed what was happening with some of the stormwater here, one of the things we just kind of started to think about is would it be a better location to put an infiltration system off of this existing line instead of putting something up in here and you know trying to, to get the water off this pavement over to infiltration area is it better serve that we try and retrofit an infiltration area here off of the outlet to that catch basin um, so I didn't, didn't know if uh, the commission had any thoughts on that because now, now now we would be back in your jurisdiction uh, with that um, so but I think I'd bring it up to see if you had any, any concerns with, with doing that or a preference with, with doing that. Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yeah. Um, I guess ultimately, <coughs> with, with infiltration, wherever it works, I mean, you've you got to have the right soils, the Absolutely. right distance to groundwater. Absolutely. Um, where I'm a little bit concerned about that spot right now is knowing how. Uh, how much higher the adjacent lot is. So I'm not sure where the groundwater is in that area or whether the influence of dewatering that wall is going to impact that particular low point. Yeah. Um, so you'd have to do some investigation there. Just Absolutely. So that, I guess that's our next task for the infiltration is we have to do a test pit. So originally, and we haven't had a chance to do that yet, but originally we we're going to do some testing over here for the infiltration system. And if that worked out, great, we're going to put it in there. But you know, after the site walk, we're kind of thinking, if this area was conducive for it, the soils were conducive for that, would this be a better spot you know, for that? Um, you know, kind of pick up an existing outfall and root it through some infiltration, maybe reduce some of the flow of that pipe that gets out um, to the brook as, a, as an added benefit. Again, if the soils are conducive for that, absolutely. Uh, otherwise, we're, you know, we're probably eight, ten feet higher up here, um, so we should be pretty much high and dry, but just wanted to bring it up, and if yeah. the commission thought that, again, if the, if the soils allowed it, would that be a preference to come over in there? Yeah, I would say I have no preference one way or the other. Um, no objection necessarily, as long as no, the soils No objection okay. there, as long as, keep in mind, you're taking, what, roof and parking lot right now? Your, your, your previous proposal was to sh shoot that off towards yeah. the south? Yeah. If what's going into um, the alternative you're discussing, that an infiltration area there, if that's also picking up that catch base in the other areas, that's going to be that um, exposed recycled concrete. A little dirtier. And, and you get, it's going to be dirtier, and you're going to need some different type of pretreatment there before it gets into it. Yep. Yeah. So that's again one of the discussions we had is trying to trying to balance that. Um, but wanted to bring it up be upfront and see if that was something that prefer or you wouldn't want. Um, obviously the, the water quality is an important part of that. Yeah, I, I personally don't have a problem with that. Okay. As long as it works. Yep. That, that'd be my only concern is, is groundwater. Okay. Absolutely. It won't work for right. the groundwater. I do have kind of just one comment and question because uh, obviously it looks like we're going to be continuing this. The crushed concrete um, you brought in was from Aggregate Industries. Yep. Can we get 
a note slash letter from them just stating that it's either new crushed concrete or something that doesn't have uh, any contaminants to it. Um, meaning, a lot of times um, material suppliers will crush old foundations and or slabs of garages, hence there might be oil in there. You don't want to contaminate your site anymore. So if it's new concrete, that's that's not a problem. Just a letter stating it's, it's new concrete, so it's not. Because as that parking lot starts draining, you don't want to be leaching any oils or petroleum products that that may be may not be in there, but into the to the brook. So um, I'm assuming you just call them and they should be able to issue kind of a, a letter stating what it what it is. So. I mean, Mr. Chairman. I mean, the letter's one thing, but you you ultimately never know what's coming onto the site until you're on the site. You never know. So, you're correct. So I, but. I I think ultimately at some point we should consider um, conditioning that that be that be monitored and samples taken. We can we out. can do that. It's just I think that's a little bit more robust than just the letter from aggregate industries. We can do that. We can do that. But I think the letter is also important because now. It, puts it out there. Well, I just want to put them on notice that exactly. that yeah. there could be <laughs> concerns. Yeah. If I walk onto the site and I see you smell something that I don't like, it's at least it puts them on notice. You that see black concrete. <laughs> I've seen it, so yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ultimately, I, I, you know, I want to protect the resource area, but if they put you can, it also could protects, be content, it protects the property, it protects the property owner because if so. you dump contaminated material there, it's not your problem to clean yeah. it up. So. Right. Um, well, that was my only comment. Yes? Yes? Um, what's the approximate size for the snow storage area? I, I don't see that on this plan. Yep, yeah, so we haven't updated the plan yet with that, but um, so it's, it would basically be um, all along this, this edge in here, and then we have some areas on this side there uh, that we could do it for, for in this area. Um, and then, you know, if we get some, some some huge, huge storms. Right. Um, ultimately, we could use some of the parking area. And I have up there too. What the up idea. in here too. You know, a lot of this snow easily gets pushed over into this area. So for the for the bottom area, you, know, you, you probably start using this in here. And then if it gets too much to, to handle, um, you know, it's not like we're it's a shopping mall. We have to make sure um, all of the customers have a place to park to go shopping. You know, it could. It could actually expand and keep getting you know, larger if, if needed. Yeah. My concern I was that they made sure we show that. On the my concern was that if it were filled, I forget what the total number was. Was it 150 for cars? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That if it were filled, you might be running out of space to put snow. Yeah. Yeah. I, the nice thing too is we showed this striping in a way that you could see how you could park cars in a manner that if you wanted to be able to have every car be able to move without moving another car. But this really, like you would do for a shopping plaza. But the reality is you don't have to do it that way because it's just a property owner's going to have to move like a car dealership. Right. You see cars stacked up, you know, four, four in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, so. We could condense the cars if need be uh, to, to create more snow storage if that didn't come an issue. Good point, though. Yes. Amy, do you have any questions or comments? No, I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, one of the questions I kind of had you talked about already is just the catch basins with the, the crushed concrete as far as keeping sediment from getting in there. I mean, typically things are paved that we deal with, you know. With catch basin. With catch basin. Yeah. So, I mean, how is that? Is that normally handled in, a, in an area like this? Is it? Well, so we're, we're dealing with existing uh, as it is now. Recycled like concrete, I think, will be better. You're probably going to have less of what we saw on the site walk, um, you know, where you had the loose, loose gravel that needs to get in there. Um, you know, so it's um, we could try and retrofit um, a hood on there. That's going to be more for oils and gases. Um, like anything, it's it's cleaning. So you know, it's just going to have to be backed out or whatever. Like anything, yeah. Like any any stormwater system, um, if you don't clean it, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do uh, on any site. Um, 
And so it's, uh, anyway, unfortunately, uh, probably one inherited, you know, a developed site and I tried think, to make improvements as best we can. Yeah, I think once the concrete's kind of stabilized and in place, it'll be better than the loose gravel. Mm -hmm. But I think at the beginning, you're going to have to do some maintenance yeah. until it gets sure. compacted and, and sure. you know, yeah. clean up the catch basin. Like I think one of the catch basins we looked at in the street was <laughs> pretty full. Pretty full of stuff. It's so. spring, though. Cut the DPW some slack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out there shortly. Oh, yeah. But well, you have that problem you know, all the time. But. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Not right now. All right. Um, I'll ask the audience. Anybody else like to speak on this notice of intent? Second time and third time. Um, I'm assuming you would like to continue this hearing? Not particularly, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, no, but. Um, that's the place to be where we're going to need to go. Okay. If I can, just to yep. make sure Please I have my do. list of marching orders uh, accurate. Um, do some more further investigation on to the origin of the two-inch pipe that comes into the catch basin from the direction of the nearby property. Um, delineate in the field, um, uh, you know, approximately what the removed earth area would be in here. And denote that on the plan so we can walk it um, and, and do that. I guess on that, will it be worth doing what we just did on the site walk? We had flagged it just before a site walk, and there's actually one or two flags we actually moved during the site walk. Then we had our field crews go back out and locate it. You know, so our, our location didn't have to change. We can try and do that again if that, that works out, if you might know when you're gonna be doing a site walk. Um, to, to review that, uh, but either way, um, so flag the area, you know, make sure the commission's okay with that area, delay it down the plan so it matches what you see in the field. Um, come up with um, some type of uh, visual barrier uh, to uh, minimize the potential for further encroachment of, of the developed area there. Um, get that stormwater management form, uh, in for the file, uh, and then um, get a letter from aggregate or whatever supplier they end up using for the uh, con crushed concrete being a new concrete, not a, a contaminated concrete. Uh, and then, um, then we can further look into where we may end up be doing this infiltration um, system and try and get some more information uh, on that and show snow storage in the plant. Yeah, I think the infiltration if we have something, especially if you if you do plan on moving it, because now it becomes jurisdictional. Yeah, but I mean that yeah, wouldn't so. necessarily hold up this process necessarily. Like, say for some reason we you know, can't get all the soil testing done, all the design done by the next meeting. Um, I think what we're looking to do is hopefully get to a point mm -hmm. that the property owner can kind of get back to restoring the site. Okay, he's done a lot of work, taken a lot of the the, the debris out of there, but kind of stopped, hopefully right. see where things are going before he spends more money <laughs> uh, on cleaning it up. But um, right. you know, So it seemed like that wasn't gonna be a make or break on that, but you know, even if we don't get to it and we decide, geez, it works, I'll come here, we could submit as a modification okay. so, so at least you can keep going with that, if that makes sense. I don't know where it's gonna go, I just wanna bring that up. And, yeah, any, you know, if you, if you can get anything done before the yeah, 24th, absolutely. two weeks from yeah. today, yeah. that'd be helpful, but that'd be good. That was all I had. <laughs> I think I covered it, I hope. I think you did. Yep, I think you got them all, so. Yeah, I mean, did get that did taken you want us to do the same thing with the site walk um, that we did with the, the kind of notification, trying to see what's a good time, or... If you think you're going to be out there this weekend, we can you know, get right over there and, and hang some flags if you want us to be there with you. I can just make a quick comment. Um, it, it seems like even when we're trying to plan it, it's not always working to plan. So <laughs> I, I would get the flags out there and then just if you could notify when our agent done. that it's there. If we can schedule a time, they'll meet great. If not, I'm sure we can get out there on our own time. We'll yeah. just 
like this weekend I could probably get out there, but others might not. Yeah, you know, that, so. if, if, if that happens and one of our presenters aren't there on site and you see you need to change them, just let us know that, you know, we move the flag or whatever. Um, you know, so if we got to change, if we haven't already located it, we can change it. Um, just so we can try and get you all the information as best we can for the next meeting. So I would, I would suggest if you're going to flag it and notify us without having done the survey part of it, at least yes. do a, a field sketch, um, giving us a rough location of where it is on your plan. That way we can yeah, look at it. Yeah, we can just, you know, just do a quick sketch, get over to Angela so you can when yeah. you walk it. You can see the, you know, the flagging up in here. Is there anybody on site, like on a weekend or uh, uh, a Saturday? Saturday uh, or something there. Usually till one o'clock. But if there's no one there, you can't just go in. No problem. You have no issues with what's no issues, driving no. in there. No, as long as you guys, there's no issues. Okay. But the gates will be closed. You can park up there and then just walk. Okay. Which okay. is what we we had done last time anyway. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Just, I, I would say, f try to flag it as soon as possible. I'll try. I mean, uh, Notify uh, Angela, and then we'll. I think that this one will be an easier one. Any of us can kind of go up there and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and see. Okay, well, it's, it's kind of a breaking slope. Just makes it good sense. Right. To do it. I think a lot of it will probably probably hurt the bank stakes it because there wasn't much you know, upgrowth to hang flags on, so it may just kind of bang some stakes in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. That works. Anything else before we continue? All right. So we'll continue it to the next meeting, and we'll, like I said, if you can get something over to her, the sooner the better. We'll definitely get out there so we can hopefully wrap this up at our next meeting, and we're good to go. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next hearing, um, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. There'll be a public hearing to consider a notice of intent by 375 Harvard Realty LLC regarding the proposed installation of a sewer line, stormwater management structure, and site paving, wetland resource area altercation and replication as proposed. Address 375 Harvard Street, map 370. Lot 19, DEP file 1991069. I believe the gentleman that's representing the applicant is just I'm walking in the room. <laughs> you <are>. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. We're waiting for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Except for, I think last time um, I passed out the written wetland application. That was a comment from DEP. I passed on the last time. Um, so I don't know if anyone got a chance to look at that or comment on that. Um, that was an addition we made. But I hadn't really altered the plans much yet until kind of all had a consensus on, on things, trying to hope to make one fell swoop of revisions. But this is the plan I we showed last time. I passed this out. I don't know if anyone got a chance to look at that or any issues or, or, or comments with that. Um, but if you'd like, I can I can go through some of our previous comments. Or if you want to get right into site walk items or however you'd like to proceed. Yeah, I, I think we can kind of just 
I'd like to call, uh, question the members that did do the site walk, get their take on it, and and um, kind of go from there. Unfortunately, I was not un I was unable to attend myself. So, um, any members that did attend, if you could offer <coughs> suggestions, comments, and or questions of things you saw. Well, I was I was there. So okay. I, I know we went over in the field a number of things to, to look at. Okay. And I think he's actually got them written down right now where I do not. Okay. So I, I start with him. Sure. That's that's fine. <laughs> so um, so some of the things we, we kind of discussed, um, I guess we'll just off the top of my head of the order, one of the concerns that we come up uh, quite a bit was you know, this area is being used uh, by contractors. And so there are some storage areas, um, you know, storage of a uh, graded base or, or fill and whatnot, kind of in some concrete block areas. And the commission had brought that up, you know, very early on. Got a chance to take a walk and see it, you know, for, you know, for certain. You know, and then the, the concern, the long-term concern, is that um, it's set up in such a way that's not going to promote um, unneeded siltation to the stormwater system. Even though we will have a stormwater system. No need to overtax that, you know, with a pile of graded base, you know, something like that. Um, so, um, what we're planning on doing, you know, when we get through all these revisions, we talked about this is a lot of it's stored right in here now. Uh, again, so no, nothing's paved yet. There's no stormwater system in there yet. But what we're thinking of doing is putting them right here, kind of at the base of this wall. And, and, and continue the grading like it is now, where this the be paved area, which is going to be a lot better um, than just the, the gravel that's there. We'll have you know, stormwater collection off to the basin, and this area pitches to a curb. So we have a berm here. So that's going to help contain everything from on site and get it into our stormwater system. But with the, the storage areas of the materials, what we're looking to, what we're trying to do is, if you can envision it, pitch this this way so there's a high point along the front of the storage bins so that surface water in here wouldn't be apt to kind of run through those stockpiles and, and pick up some of that foreign debris. In the stockpile areas kind of pitch that back to themselves. So if any water that falls in the stockpile area kind of gets stuck within those concrete bins. So so that's what we're thinking about doing to try and you know try and alleviate some of that. Um, you know trying to keep it more self-contained. Uh, so you don't have to worry about water kind of washing through um, on that. So that was uh, one item. Um, we did you know, walk all the wetland areas, and I think it's somewhat, somewhat obvious where the historical wetland line we talked about last time, where it really kind of follows the property line, and then over the years, as the septic system has continued to, to leach out into this open grass area, that's what kind of really why those wetlands came about um, and that's our flag. So it's, um, you know, so the real historical line is, is somewhere down in, in there. Um, I don't think, I think when we went through, we didn't see any, any real foreign debris, uh, miscellaneous, you know, um, trash or anything, except it's a Christmas tree at the bottom of the slope. Someone threw a Christmas tree down there. But um, I think if there was any, you know, foreign debris in the wetland areas, I didn't see any when we were walking. Um, so if there was some, unfortunately I wasn't there previously, um, it's probably no longer there. Um, you know, we talked about, I know it's the previous comment about if we can enlarge the top of this basin to get more of a 10 foot wide berm. Um, haven't done it yet, but, but yes, I think we can, we can do that. It just, we're six feet here, so essentially it pushes this four feet into our area that we're trying to use, but that's, that's fine. I think that's a, an easy fix on, on that. Um, some of the comments from, from DEP, um, they requested evidence certificate compliance on the old order, even though the order is expired. Um, I, I have that all typed up, ready to go. Um, it's just being, I think it's one of those things you can hopefully execute at the same time as an order is issued, so there's, there's no overlap there. Uh, DEP commented on the uh, narrative on the restoration, which we, we had done that. Um, they also commented about the 50-foot offset that you typically should have, if you can, uh, for infiltration practices uh, from surface waters. And we do have that from that historical line, but because it was previously delineated, the wetlands came up like this, 
basically on top of the septic system, which is not necessarily accurate. So if you were to offset that 50 feet, it's right through the center of our, of our basin. We don't feel as though it's a real naturally occurring wetland, um, so we're hoping not to have to adhere to that from this area, because uh, now that would push our basin basically into the middle of the existing parking area, and it, it, it doesn't go along with the overall intent and what was previously approved. So uh, don't feel as though that's going to be an issue uh, where the intent is to bring a new sewer line in and pick up the two existing septic tanks and, 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 and leach areas. So those were really no longer have that, that wetland um, characteristics to it. Um, DEP comments about having um, additional testing in the stormwater basin to ensure groundwater separation. Absolutely, completely agree. And on our original plans, we put a note to have a confirmatory test pits done in that in that basin uh, to make sure that that we have that two foot separation. So that's uh, absolutely. Uh, that. Uh, and those were, from what I know, kind of the, the conservation related items that, that I had. And if I can, just for a minute, I know it's um, the neighbors brought up um, you know, concerns about how this property has impacted them, um, not from a conservation standpoint, but just the overall uh, quality of life of uh, living next to that. So. Um, during that site walk, we actually uh, one of the property owners, representative of property owners, was there, and what he liked to do. Uh, we got maybe a little bit beyond the commission's purview, but wanted to bring it up anyways. Now that again, the intent is to have this round the building access because before it stopped here, it stopped there. So from what I understand from the history, is that this driveway was always kind of required for a fire safety issue, because if there ever was an issue here not having the round the building access, you could come in from this way. But didn't want it to be a major access for business because it's a residential area, so it was, it was gated for that. But now with the creation of this round the building access, what the property owner would like to do, you know, get the fire department's approval and eliminate this paved access altogether. And then by doing that, you can kind of see the topography here along White Street. We're low here, you know, let's, uh, let's pick a comment door, you know, 420, 421. Then there's an earth berm that comes up there. So it, it provides a little bit of, of screening in this area, come up two, three, four feet, then it comes back down to White Street. But when you get to the driveway, it doesn't do that, obviously, because it needed that vehicular access in. What they'd like to do, is consider, is continue this earth berm through that driveway. The driveway goes away, consider that raised earth berm along and try and I think grade wise look like we could probably get to what was an existing light pole right here and, and elevate that. So a little bit of a berm there, earth berm, and then put some screening on top of that. So earth berm to help bring the grade up. So we can put some kind of a screening on top of that. Um, wanted to mention that because technically some of that earthwork would be in the buffer zone. Uh, so but um, talking with one of the representatives, they, they would like to do that um, to try and help um, address some of the concerns the neighbor has been voicing um, about C. So don't want to bring that up. That's what the intent is there. Uh, you know, if there are no objections, you know, the, the final round of plans, we can you know, show some grading in there and you know, propose the screening on top. Uh, uh, I know those questions on the fill brought in. Um, talked to property representative and um, contractor that did a lot of that, and they said no, they didn't bring any any hazardous material. What it was was excess fill from jobs that they're working on, whether it be a, a utility installation, like a, putting in a sewer line. Um, you have excess earth that's left over after you put in the pipe and stone. They have excess material, so that's what was, was brought in to, to fill through that. So um, they didn't they didn't know any, any, any hazardous materials going in there. It was, it was clean fill um, for that. And I, I believe, I think I touched upon everything. Yes. 
Any questions, comments? Can I jump in there? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, with respect to the stormwater pond, if you could just do the test pit ahead of time, um, I'd always like to see that when you can. So That's okay. Again, I think we talked. Yeah. I was reluctant to start so throwing a machine out there, the nature of how this project has gone. Yeah. No, I think but you've, you've got two absolutely. weeks between now and next meeting. Just go ahead and confirm that okay. or otherwise alter the design if, if need be yeah. so that you're not pushed back an additional meeting. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, I really do want to see a stormwater management plan for the site just because housekeeping really is a big issue there. The fill that was brought in while I was not around when that happened, mm -hmm. um, just to further add to that, we did talk to our former agent about that at one meeting, and I think I might have talked to him at some point as well. I think the health department was involved with the site at one point. A lot of the stuff that shouldn't have been there was brought out. Um, my conversations with him at the time were, did they address the wetland fill issue at the same time? And he said no, so we still need to follow up with that. This was going back months ago. Right. So I think, I think some of the materials that weren't suitable for fill had actually been taken out of there in the past. Um, From what I understand, the wetland fill issue is, and that's, you know, we're showing that, you know, this was filled and, and this was filled, and we're hoping to to, to be able to allow that to stay and then create a replication area to compensate for that, if I'm understanding it correctly. So my last comment too would be the replication area. Having, having seen the site mm. and knowing that you've actually got um, a barrier there with that stone wall and an impoundment reality, mm -hmm. um, you even need to consider doing some type of a breakthrough if you can to allow the hydrologic connection or plan on uh, you know a vegetative community that can really become inundated for you know days at a time with water there um, in case that that comet does hold it back some some things will you know don't mind if there's water above the surface for a few days other things want to see it a few inches below the surface so just double check if you have a, a landscape architect or a wetland scientist doing the proposed plantings there, knowing, knowing from being in the field that that potentially could be pretty wet there. Could be yeah. okay. Yeah, so some of the, um, we had high bush blueberry and some elderberry, so we're just taking a look at that and make sure what we, we're having there can sustain um, inundation for periods of what time. What was there of your concern? You said there's a, a wall? This is a right, all, all along that edge. Right there is okay. a stone wall, oh, and okay. it's it's on some. It's it's really it's an impoundment, really at this point. Um, okay. So you're in, just afraid it's not going to allow water infiltration. The, or, yeah, I mean, if, that you look the, if you look at the base of the wall, you you can see how uh, once you dig that out, it's it's you're basically going to have a, a mini dam more or less. there's just not going to be a connection. I mean, there's this connection to wetlands on either side, if I'm understanding correctly. We want to make sure the vegetation we put in there is suitable for a situation where you have periods of inundation. Right. You know, so maybe not a, not a bordering, you know, not a, not a wetland species that, you know, wet a little bit, just has high ground water, but something that can, can survive periods of inundation, okay. if I'm understanding <coughs> correctly. Okay. Good news is, is it should be wet. Yep. <laughs> it should be wet. Yeah, the way it's okay. a lot of replication areas, you have a hard time getting the water there. So. Yeah. True. <laughs> um, and I know this has nothing to do with us currently, but kind of that earthen berm uh, with vegetation on it. Do you have intentions of talking with the fire department and or getting that kind of yeah, so that's the property we saw before kind of our next meeting. Uh, I don't know if it'll, it'll work out that quickly, but um, all right. It's yeah. just because if, if you do have to grade it and it starts coming in within the buffer zone, then right. we have to deal with it. Yeah. So I think the, the intent you is know. going to be if, if we can't, so the driveway is out of the buffer zone. Right. So at the very least, we can show 
you know, earth vermin here. If it comes down with yeah. some screening, and uh, again, we'll see what happens. You know, I can we can even show it continuing all the way, and I just have a CYA note for me that basically says need to confirm with you know City of Leominster that this axis can be okay. removed. You know, so the intent is there. Um, just I just want to. Yeah. At our next meeting, if that's kind of the plan going forward, yeah. we'll deal on. with it then yeah. and not have to deal with it again later on. Yeah. Because you are going to have to move that basin a little bit because of the exactly. added four feet, correct? Yeah, so what will happen is that the basin will stay here. Right. It'll and just then this has to open up. Right? Open up, so it's, it's going to shift this way. Right. I'm going to lose a little bit of capacity in the basin, so I'll have to make it up a little more on that edge. Right. Yeah. So this will, you know, it's going to be you know, four to six feet that will, you know, you probably won't really notice it on the plan very much. But right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I just want to just deal with that corner as, you know, yeah. showing the berm and what your plan is for, for vegetation and or fencing or whatever your screening material is going to be. Overall, Brad, seeing you, you thoroughly walked the site, do you have any major concerns with the site as it sits, meaning things that can't, you don't see being able to be addressed or? No, I think, I think everything we've talked about can ultimately be addressed. Be addressed and fixed and, okay. Would the property owner have any issues if I visit the site over the weekend or sure. anything like that. Yeah, absolutely not. Unfortunately, I couldn't make the site yeah. work, but I, yeah. I've driven by it a few times and looked, but I yeah. haven't had a real chance to get done. Yeah. Get I, mean, I think it's, you know, if anything, um, try and let someone know. Like uh, was, I was, usually try to. <laughs> just a quick little funny story. Um, so we went out there to hang the flags. Okay. Yes, we had one of our field crews out there hanging the flags, and one of the tenants basically came over and who are you? Right. You know, and you know, granted, our field crews are kind of instructed to don't say too much to people you don't know. And he almost kicked him off the site because he, he didn't didn't know we were working for the property owner. So, okay. um, but if you th I can let the property owner know that maybe, maybe some members should be on the weekend. You think? I think yeah. Okay, so I just probably be the Friday or the let weekend. Them, you know, and then yeah. everyone everyone knows there's things going on here. So I think it's easy as. Okay. With the Conservation Commission, they'll, okay, no problem. I just don't want to hold up any, oh, yeah. anything, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's tough getting the, all the members together to do oh, a site block, unfortunately, yeah. so. I understand that. I was unable to get down to that meeting. I was out of state, yeah. um, and I'll right. be down there as well. Sure. Yeah. At some point, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just let them know, yeah. again, it just could have a couple good handful of people men individually men walking, walking around. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, did we send out a letter about the power washing of the trucks? I know that was brought up at the last meeting. That the, yeah. I don't know the tenants that was yeah, done. I don't, I don't think one went out. Um, great point. Um, did mention it to the property owner. Also was mentioned uh, to the tenant that was doing that to put them uh, aware of that. But um, I don't believe a letter went out. I think it's probably worth still doing that. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. I know. I let them know, mm -hmm. and they're aware. But um, makes can sense to, to follow up. Can, can follow up. That's kind of more of a DP issue. Mm -hmm. Well, is it check with the uh, health director in town too? Okay. Is is that Chris? Chris Collins' department. Yeah. Check with him. Is what sometimes they can enforce that as well. Yeah. It makes sense. It's you know, it's you know nice to have that letter sent to them, certified mail. You know, exactly. put you on notice. You know, if you're not aware of it, this practice yeah. is not allowed. Uh, uh, you know, please, please discontinue that uh, unless you want further action. Yeah, yeah, if you could follow up with Chris and or DP, whichever you see fit. I'll contact Chris. And Start with Chris, yeah. obviously first, and maybe he can send you in the right direction. But. Yeah, and then it may have enough to to step it. It may be worth you know send that letter to the property owner. Correct. But also, the tenant that I think people believe it is. Um, I don't know if there's anything against doing that, but 
Um, yeah, well, ultimately, and, typically their recourse is with the owners. No, I understand yeah, that, yeah, but, but you know, it's, it's one of those. Uh, if it doesn't hurt, it's a why tough, not send a letter yeah. to the to the tenant as well? <laughs> like, um, I don't I don't know what's the right protocol for that. But, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know how that one works. Tenant, I don't know if we can do that. I think we can only do it. I wasn't sure. You want to look into yeah, it and see what the regulations are. See what the regulations are. If you, if you is. saw someone you know, doing an inappropriate thing, why can't you tell them? I don't right. know. That's just, but that's actually, right. do, do the right thing. But. Right. But yeah, if you can do that, that'd be Yeah, I'll check. Because that's kind of a big, little out, of little out of our jurisdiction, but it does affect storm water and or right. runoff. Right. I think it's, you know, so. Can be easily handled by. That's correct. Don't do that. <laughs> don't uh, do it or put in a system. One yeah, or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just getting back to the housekeeping part. Um, the two times I've been out there, trash going down the slope in areas has been an issue. Yeah. So I, I know when we talked with Mr. Demasi, he even mentioned possibly relocating a dumpster. Um, or getting enclosures or something around them. So you should still still be thinking about that too. Uh, my concern is it's not just the tenants of that building using those. It's, it's almost open to the public it appears, cause especially the one up, up by the road. And I think that comment was made to me that people outside the building are using it. So something that's gonna more adequately secure them and protect the stuff so that we don't see people running down the slope to try to collect it before our site visit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it trash from a dumpster type trash? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's... Uh, One, I mean, one's it's right at the top of the slope. Right over here. Uh, well, down, down, uh, actually down. Yeah, so it's right here. Yeah, yeah cool. and stuff. It overflows. My first um, visit, it was overflowing. Hence, the second down. time it wasn't, but somebody was actually actively down there picking stuff up, so it, okay. it's still a problem. Can it be moved outside the buffer zone? Could it not get it away from? I don't think it being in the buffer zone is necessarily a problem as long as it's adequately maintained and secured, contained, yeah. and closed. And I, mean, I think it becomes one of those problems many businesses have. Our our business as well. And I'll come into work, no refrigerator ended up next to a dumpster. You know, it's just people find this don't want to take care of themselves. Like I said, the Christmas tree that was found. Nowhere near the dumpster at the base of the hill. You know, I think it's a it's an ongoing challenge. You know, un unfortunately, but um, yeah, we can look at uh, see if we can try and do something for that. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. Um, in regards to that, I was actually driving by there today, and the dumpster was overflowing itself today when I drove by. So that was one of my concerns as well. That if you could bring that to Chris, because that falls under his. Okay. Chris Knuth, just let him know that. Because by law, you're supposed to be able to close the cover at all times. Yeah, well, it was Keep closed, but there was, I think I was driving by, but I saw at least four bags on top and two bags on either side of it, right, so. so. And all the stormwater things that needs to be closed, but on the water health type of things, yeah. they need to be closed at all times, which means either empty it more frequently or yeah, no. put it, one. get it bigger, <laughs> larger, put it in an enclosure, I mean, but. Just yeah, well, if that's coming from them, okay, I'll, I'll mention to them as well, so they're aware right. um, that they need to. to but as soon as it goes into a wetland, then they have a problem yeah, too. Yeah, so. right on the yeah. top there, one good wind. Right. So, okay. Does any commission members and/or agent have any comments or questions? All right. I want to open it to the audience. Anybody in the audience like to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, I'd be happy to. My name is Carol Newell, and I live at 39 Point Street. I'm a directive letter. Mr. Chairman, I would like to approach you with two yep. photographs, if I may. Sure. And I will explain your photographs to everyone. Should I show these to the camera? That's fine. I can put them on the board. If you can put them right up on the board, it's fine. I can put them right up here. That would be fine. Thank you, Andrew. Sure, no problem. So, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, and Mr. Cleves, Angela. 
I'm a direct abutter to this proposed project. I looked over the plan to replicate this wetlands, and I understand there are going to be high bush blueberries and elderberries that are going to be monitored for two growing seasons. Is this Conservation Commission the people that are going to be monitoring the growth of these to make sure that everything takes and grows? It says they're going the plantings are going to be monitored for two growing seasons, so I just wonder who's going to be doing the monitoring. No, so, well, if I can, if I can, we, we would have people looking at the two, but ultimately the reason for that kind of comment in there is that to put on notice that if we were to go back to the Conservation Commission to, to, to close out the permit through a certificate of compliance process, just because, you know, say we did all the work right now and planted everything, we're not allowed to come back and get a sign off from them because the two growing seasons haven't gone by yet. So through a certificate of compliance process, which is kind of the final uh, check for them to make sure that we did what we're supposed to do, um, can going to go out and look and see it's all been established. If that hasn't been established, they're not going to give a sign off for us on our permit. And we have to make good on that before we can get a sign off on the permit. Okay, thank you very much. That is correct. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you know from the last meeting of March 27th, the owners of Harvard Realty have a special permit from the city council. Uh, and I understand about this berm. How far up White Street is that berm going to go? So it's basically you know, picking up from where the, the berm exists here. Just it's an existing just berm now. It's not something yep. you're so going right, to put in? So right here is right. kind of where the earth berm ends. And then it slopes down. That's a great picture. Then it slopes down to the driveway mm -hmm. and then stays flat. So what the intent is to kind of continue this berm here, across that driveway, you know, fill this in, this driveway goes away, this gate goes away, and continue the berm across. Um, the light pole is right here, mm -hmm. and trying to continue that um, as, as far as we can get to get the grading to work. Um, you know, the, the intent is talking to the property owner, you know, they, they'd like to put some screening in around here. But as we're also looking at it on site, we want to try and raise the grade that the screen would sit on to try and get as much height on that screen as possible. If we were to just put, you know, say a, a six foot fence along here, it wouldn't be as, as nice as if we could build this earth up, say even two feet, that adds two feet of, of height of screening. Um, and then put a fence on top of that? Put a fence on top of it. So that's the intent, is to try and raise the grade up to put I a fence on top of I don't know how the city council is going to feel about closing that gate off. Um, that, that's in the special permit, you know, I had some trees planted up um, across the street from my house as a buffer zone, mm -hmm. and the trees don't go down as far as the gate starts. So I don't know. That's that's an emergency vehicle access. I'm not sure the police and the fire yep. department are going to agree with this, but that is not my concern. However. Um, the owners must comply with their order of conditions that go for their special permit. And one of the conditions is their back entrance. Uh, they were supposed to install a permanent breakaway gate. The back gate now, as you can see in the photograph, is not in compliance. Uh, the abutters should not have all this aggravation to look at that all the time. We need a buffer to protect us from these unsightly views. We need a solid fence at the edge of the property facing the abutters. We need a fence that blocks away this awful mess. A fence, should be, a fence should be required as one of the conditions for the Conservation Commission to give an approval for this project. The abutters really need relief from this disgusting site. Uh, Harvard Realty should not be allowed to make any changes to their property until they are in compliance with the order of conditions of their special permit. Harvard Realty should not be allowed to make any changes to their property until they also agree to put up a solid fence between their property and the abutters. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak on this issue. And I did want to say one other thing. As you can see, the fence today, the gate, is two pieces of blue PVC pipe that was taped together with duct tape. And now the two pieces are just laying on the ground. 
and the duct tape is just hanging off them. And you can see the pipes that have been strewn around in the backyard. This is what the abutters see from their living room windows. This is very unpleasant, very unsightly. If you commissioners would please walk a mile in our shoes, what if it was your home and you looked out your living room window and you saw that? What would you do? Just kindly, if you would just think about us and think about what you would do if that was the view from your living room window. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak in the open forum. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak on this? Third time? Final time. Okay. Um, we'll leave the public hearing open. And. Can I just. Yes, sir. Um, this is Noel. Just. I, um, I, I totally understand your concerns, but one thing that I just would like to bring to your attention um, this 100 foot, foot uh, buffer zone right here. Um, we're basically only just the only thing we're, we have under our jurisdiction is from this point in. So anything beyond this 100 feet is, we can't actually make any, any, we can't put any conditioning. We can ask, but we can't require anything beyond that 100 feet. Otherwise, we overstate our, 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 um, our jurisdiction. Where does the 100 feet start and where does it end? It, it follows this line. You want to? So it's this line. This is the driveway here. So looking at just kind of, I'm going to kind of ballpark it right about here, down. So about, I'll say 20, 30 feet downhill of the existing driveway. So, you know, so somewhere down Now I understand that you're going to move the detention basin. Yeah, so if I, if I can, yeah. it's just going to, we're going to enlarge the top of it a little bit. But it's it not going to affect the abutters in any way, no. is it? No. Okay. No. No, they'll just end up taking a little bit more of their parking area, yeah. about four feet more of the parking area. So. But that and will have no effect on the abutters as far as I can see. No, no. And that's, that's why I asked uh, Anthony that if, if he can, in the meantime, if this berm in, in entrance has, that's more uh, emergency fire, fire, he has to deal with the town. Uh, emergency on I that. that but if it comes in as soon as it comes into the buffer zone then it falls under our jurisdiction mm -hmm. so if if that is kind of the plan we'll deal with it on on our section so he'll, he'll kind of have to answer that before we can kind of what well, it makes no difference to me whether there's a gate there or not as long as nothing goes up across the street from 39 white street that is my concern because that's right. my home right okay any other questions from the commission or comments? Actually, yeah. Um, sure. As I look at this, would it be possible just, um, there's a wetland area here. Um, That's across the street from my right. house. What are you so, going to do? But there's no, can you just indicate the, the 100 foot buffer of, of that? Because it's still on the same site, it's not sure. going to affect yeah. anything. But yeah, sure. that's wetland. That's wetlands across the street from correct. our house. That's a wetland. Right. They're not. You're right. They're not working in that area. But I'm asking them to put this 100 foot foot buffer line, just like is on here. Just put it good, here as well. Good point. It's not going to impact anything, but it's just nice to have as a reference. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you a question. What kind yes. of a fence do you have plans to put up there if you're going to put one up? We haven't we haven't decided what we're looking at doing. Today they got these chain fences. You can see in. Out, you can see out, but you can't see in. I don't know what what we're. Well, I'm trying to find as a swimming pool. You can't you can't. See yeah, I mean, in. there are many many options. Um, they haven't decided what. Well, what I know doing. these people. They'll probably put up a snow fence, but I mean, yeah. it's the idea. Well, it's not going to be a fence to keep people out. It's a fence so it's that a, you can't see in. It's a visual fence, is yes. what we want. Yeah, so it's not going to be a, an open graded chain link fence that, that would defeat the purpose. Something like the gate, right? Um, right, so this isn't the visual barrier. It would be, there are many options. It could be, it could be bushes. It could be, it could be a variety. It could be a stockade fence. It could be a slatted chain link fence. But the, the intent is to provide screening for the Well, the history yeah. of the place, usually, I don't think they're going to go that far. 
Yeah, so I, I don't know. I got sorry to take up the commission's time. It's kind of out of the commission's jurisdiction. I just wanted to bring it up. The property owners mentioned it to me. They'd like to try and do something, you know, to to kind of block some of the, the visual um, this from the from the buyers. So I, I don't know exactly what it is, and it's really out of the purview of this forum. But um, uh, but they are planning on doing something. So so to to take away some of the visual impact. Well. If the people that own that property are not compliant with the conditions of their special permit, then I don't think they should be allowed to make any changes to their property. Mr. Cleve, do you have any questions or comments? I think I got it all on this one. I okay. <laughs> we don't need to read Well, I didn't know if you had any no. questions for us. Or no, I, th or? I think I got I could, well, Might as well just go through a quick test bit in the basin. We can go ahead and do that. And that'll help us you know, further finalize this basin and enlarge the berm um, to get that 10 foot, uh, 10 foot in width. Uh, update the operation maintenance plan that was submitted to kind of more specifically discuss kind of the nature of the activity that's going on there. Um, we'll show some storage bins and kind of how we're looking to try and um, keep that self-contained. Um, gonna uh, try and do the best we can to get an answer on the driveway if we can eliminate, eliminate that or not. Just how the nature of things go when you're trying to get information with multiple parties may not happen, but I think what I'd still like to do is try and show something in some fashion so it's out there. Um, look into the dumpster and, and dumpster screening or relocation, something like that. Add the 100 foot buffer line to this wetlands up in this area. Confirm the plantings that are gonna be done in the wetland location area are suitable for potential inundation. I think that's all I had. Sounds about right. Okay. All I can say is do the best you can between now and our next meeting, and I plan on visiting the site in the very near future. Um, so yeah, if you can just notify the yeah. property owner, just have to yeah, let them know it could be a few couple people, few people poking around. Yeah. And I try to normally um, notify people, especially if it's a homeowner. But this is a little bit more difficult <laughs> if it's a, yeah. a business like this. But yeah. you know. But I think, again, um, it's no secret that we're going through a process here. Okay. Um, so I think it's just, I think in, in our case, our field crews are kind of tight-lipped. Uh, no, just like I'm with the Conservation Commission doing a site walk. Um, yeah, you, you should be fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll continue it to our April 24th meeting. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Could just follow up on the dumpster and the pressure washing thing with start with Chris for us. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll move to our last hearing. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. It will be a public hearing, a public meeting to consider an RDA by Manusmaq Country Club regarding the proposed maintenance of a drainage ditch that traverses the golf course, address 40 Manusmaq Ave, Map 393, Lot 1. We have some communications. Angela? Um, yes, I spoke to Chuck um, Deming as well as Matt Morrow. They are getting the consultant out there to flag the area, then they'll let me know, and then we can schedule a site walk just so everything is marked okay. before we go out. So we'll continue it till the April 27th, that's April 24th meeting, unless you let us know that they can't get it done by then. So. All right, moving on to our regular meeting. Uh, certificates of compliance, <coughs> uh, Pleasant Street Solar, DP 199-1013. Um, I know at our last meeting, it didn't seem like growth had 
started and or was failing. So um, comments or questions on the certificate of compliance. Obviously, from my take, I would say it's a it's a no at this point um, until they either fix or it grows in. Comments? Was the owner or the developer? Were they the ones that were going to contact the DPW about extending the burn, or is that that's not our responsibility, correct? Correct. I know it was. He said that it was uh, like a catch twenty two. He said he could fix it, but if the berm's not fixed, it's all for naught. So I don't know if we're going to be on hold with that. Or well, we also suggested that if if there's Kerbin's not going to be installed, for instance, there are other things he can do to manage his own site, so. Yeah. yeah. So we haven't heard from them at all. No, I do know that Marco had reached out to the DPW in the matter, um, okay. and it's, you know, it's spring. As you said earlier, it's spring, and they're quite busy right now, so um, okay. I think what helped the homeowner, the homeowner, the property owner, owner, property owner reached out as well, um, okay. but there's other things he can do. Okay. So that's the only communication we have. Is yeah, it's like I've we've reached out to DPW and that's it. Yeah, we've reached out to them, let them know what's going on, but okay. I don't think that girl's going to be there in the next no. few meetings. It's probably no, gonna be, it's going to be a little while. Well. So, so um, we'll just keep it on the keep it on the agenda until we can either hear back from the property owner um, and or if DPW happens to go up there and fix it and. Uh, either way, we'll still have to double check on the growth uh, on that one. Um, 98 Sachs Boulevard, DP 199-1049. That's the Tesla property down at the mall. Looks like we have some pictures from our agent. Did you take these, yes, Angela? I, did. Um, I went out there. It was rain, so they're a little bit blurry. <laughs> rained a lot this week every time I seem to step outside. Um, there is some growth apparent. It's not super strong, but it's most definitely going well. Okay. Um, Does the site look stable? Yeah, it looks pretty stable. It's, um, it's been in use. I checked it a couple more times this week because I had to run some errands over there, and it's it's looking pretty strong. I think, in my opinion, the COC should be completed. Okay. They do some work over by the market basket. Is that the yeah, that's my market? question. Is what's, <laughs> what's going on over there? Is so that, I had gone back to the site because Marco did say that there was a little work done over there. Okay. Um, obviously, it's before. Oh, well, for the prime utility work to go to the bowl. Or to go to the so this, oh, okay. this last page that was all part of their project. Yes. That, yeah, that doesn't look stable. That yeah, there's no there's no growth there at all. Yeah, I think that was the area that we were concerned about. Okay, so I mean, obviously around the the island and the transformer, yeah, right, that area there's definitely good. some growth growing yeah. there. I'm yeah. just a little concerned about the, um, the that slope up right against the. Yeah, is that they they need to do. I mean, they need to do some work there. Yes. Yeah. Do they own that or? Well, I think it's all owned. It's owned by the mall, right? Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm sure. I'm sure they dug it up to do some utility work. There. Yeah, that pool. Is it? Is that straw or hay on the top picture? It looks like this picture right here. It looks like um, it's a lot of straw. A lot of straw with very little growth yeah. underneath. This, I mean, doesn't look like there's much top so there. It's very bony, so you're not gonna. Get much to grow there anyway. Okay. With the weeds, but okay. Well, somebody do has to go in and fix it. Yeah. Do we have? Do you have a contact for test the group on file? Yeah, I have the engineers' information. That's fine. Can contact them. Just, just let them know that we're a little concerned about the slope near the market basket side of the project. Mm -hmm. The island looks okay, at least from what I see here. Um, I'd like I'd like to have them address that before I issued any COCs. I don't know if you guys would agree with that, but okay. If you could if you could handle that for us, we would appreciate. 
appreciate that. Um, 62 Sheldon Hill Drive, DEP 199-1037. Um, have you heard anything, Angela, from this site at all? Yeah, so I did go on site to take some pictures and make sure everything was posted. They did post all the wetland signs that Mark had provided for them. So the ba erosion barriers are still up. I didn't end up speaking with the homeowners. They had actually not received any um, any paperwork to sign, so I contacted the engineering firm Whitney and Bam, Whitney and Bam, and they are contacting them to get the um, notarized paperwork. Okay. So they'll have to be continued until we receive that. Okay. Hold up. Was the site, because I know back a little while ago, um, Mr. Colombo was out there and was a little concerned with some erosion. There's some pretty serious erosion on, as you face the house, on the right hand side of the property, there's a black fenced area. Yes. And the erosion around that was to the point where the entire post was about ready to go out. I mean, it was four feet deep. So I don't know if that's been backfilled and yes, stabilized. They, they did put some dirt and um, Looks like they did stake some sod in some areas. They mm -hmm. some staked in sod, and it looks pretty good. There is a lot of work going on right next right. door to them. That's, sure I think, is. causing, in their opinion, they said it's causing a lot of issues with growth over there just because there's trucks and everything moving along there. Okay. All right, we'll leave it on the agenda. Um, I know that was a pretty sensitive development slash area. And there was a lot of erosion issues, so. Yeah. But it sounds like at least there's some movement there with, with replanting and or helping with the. Yeah, they're trying. Erosion. They were looking. They tried staking in, and they were check. They were, they were out there checking when I was bought on the site to take a look at it. So. Okay. Good. Good. Sounds positive. Uh, Seventy-two Dewey Ave, DP one nine nine five zero nine. That's an old one. Okay. Looks like we have a letter. <laughs> Sorry, I know there's also some pictures attached in the yep. back. Um, it's for a COC. Uh, I did take a look out there. Um, there looked like some possible silt fencing at the base of that tree. I can't tell if it's, I can't tell if it's silt fencing no, or um, root, root locker, to be honest. Um, but I provided some pictures of the area. I did speak to Anthony about it as well. Um, they did abide to everything in the order of conditions and it looks like growth is apparent. I just couldn't tell if that black the black material was silt fencing or looks like like root barrier. Weed control. <laughs> yeah. And the whole water wasn't short either. So For whatever reason. That looks like a landscape they did the Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like that. I guess my only question is in this letter um just says Whitman and Bingham Associates has inspected the work proposed for the subject site on March 28th. This office found that the work is substantially complete, which I always question that what that means. Um, with the proposed, with the approved plan, with the exception of the driveway, um, a drive under garage, a retaining wall. What does this mean? with the exception of, is this all stuff that was added? Or, because obviously this is dated back to 1995. So do, we, do we have the plan with us that was approved? Um, the plan I, I, I tried one I of the plans that was given to me. The way he showed it to me was that the grading had changed in the driveway. Um, it was a, not as steep grade than what they had originally planned for. Um, and they also added a lip to the front of the driveway to prevent any street runoff from going down the driveway. Okay. Where's the resource area roughly um, on this plan? Mm -hmm. Doesn't show on the plan, it looks. Mm So it isn't on this plan. Um, it was along the back wall. 
there's like a, a, a small stone wall that you can tell there's a wetland, there's a couple wetland flags, maybe hard to see in the photos. And that's kind of the borderline of the wetland. Yeah. What you're saying. And there's not. Says, yeah. I think because of the date of it, there wasn't much information at my hands for this. I had right. to kind of go by what I could find. Okay. So we couldn't actually find the file for this project, or? Yeah, I'm still looking for it. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, just on as far as the files go, we um, <clears throat> our files used to be stored at the DPW. Um, and then at one point they moved the office down here and the, in the transition a lot of files like that the entire office kind of got shoved into a closet all the paperwork and then the people moved to here and it, 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 yeah <coughs> so a lot of the, the files the older files we don't actually have because of the miss you know whatever the way they were mm -hmm. Okay. Where is this property? Where is Dewey Street? Westland and Samson and Where is Dewey Street? area of town. So I had to use my GPS to get there because <laughs> no, I wasn't sure okay. myself. But it brought me um, pretty much very close to the Fitchburg line. Okay. Off of, uh, I had to take like Miriam and Lindell to get over there. Okay. And it was like a side street off a side street off a side street. It's a dead end right along Route 2. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. We don't know much about anything, really. So it looks like the, is this the original plan? Because it looks like in the picture, the driver goes much beyond this deck to, right. to, to some sort of drive out basement out of the yes. back. So that's the original plan. That's what I'm saying. Like He, he mentions it here. Yeah. This is the as-built. Yeah, this is the, That's an actual as-built? Yeah. Yeah. Why does the pave exit the pavement seems like it, it doesn't match the, the photographs. The as built doesn't appear to match the photographs, does it? Or am I just date the date of this is March twenty eighth, two thousand eighteen, so that should be what's existing as of that date. <clears throat> but if you look at the picture is the I think the garage is right here, possibly. So we can kind of say where the back steps are in the garage. Is, is that like the garage right there? Oh, is that? And then the... Well, the door is next to the... The door to the garage is on the same area, the same side of the house as the deck. Yes. Well, in the photograph. Right. right. I think the deck you see oh, is this oh, that's deck. Back deck. Oh, that's deck. And then the garage door is here. Oh, okay. This is a true as-built, and then this is the driveway. So this is as-built, so we don't know what the original plan looked like. I'm still looking for it. Marco, right. I had a chance to Marco that he was in the club and help me look for it. Okay. Is there a pending sale for this property or do you know what's... Um, I think there's new homeowners there. Homeowners. And so that's, it's just recently transferred? Yes. From what I knowledge, they're very... Um, they're not really sure... They weren't very sure what was going on when we were on site, so... Okay. Hmm. I, I would like to give you a little bit more time to look into it if possible. Okay. If you can't you if you can't find anything, you can't find anything. But does anybody have any objections to kind of 
I wouldn't object to it. Um, there's not there's not much in the orthos that's shown in any substantial resource area. In fact, they're not even picking up on it. Oh, okay. And there's plenty across the street or towards the Abbott area, uh, areas that I'm already familiar with. But here, there's nothing of a really great wetland system there. Okay. And it looks like all the work was done right up close to the home. Yeah. So, yeah, so if there's no rush much. on it, it wouldn't hurt to look into it to okay. see what we've got. But otherwise, I'm, I'm not really excited about it. So we might be making too much out of it from historical stuff you're looking at? No, I think it's always good to try to check with okay. what we approved. But right. if, if we don't have that, I think we've got to do something to yeah. clean the title up for them at least. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. If we can do that, that would be fantastic. Make me feel better anyways. Would uh, Whitman and Bingham have it? No. They might not have been the original. Well, that's, that's why I asked the question. Like, it says, um, this office found the work was, had, has substantially complied with the approved plan. Well, where's so the they approved must, they must, plan? They must have, well, so they must they, have. do you know what I mean? Like, who has that approved plan? Well, it's not in this package. Yeah. Right? I'll tell you as it in a second. It's, you know, it's a lead anyways. Right. They might, if we can't find ours, they might have theirs. Right. But Sometimes we have to go that route, Mr. Colombo. You know that? We have to investigate. But our uh, ACE iPad man here is going to reach out to the internet. Yep. You can tell us. <coughs> so as you as much as you know, we're not holding anything up if we continue. Yeah, and nothing being held up. It's just kind of those things that they, they want to clean up their, yeah, they want their to property clean up. and get, get the deed made and squared, squared away. Okay. Site plan was, well, it says it was signed by James Gaffney, but it doesn't say. He's just an independent. He's an independent. Uh, so right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In town. Yeah. So by the hospital. Right. That was a plan that was done in '95. Okay. Yeah, Jim Gaffney's on Eighteenth Street, I think, or something. Is where his little office is. So. Yeah, if you could just reach out to Whitman and Bingham just to see what plan are they referring to, and if they have a copy of it, can we can if we can't find ours. Yeah. That'd be great. So no COCs tonight. All right. Can, can, I, can I bring up a point of order? Mr. Sure you can. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, there was a, a job referenced for 15 Rumbrook Road, DEP file number 199. If you thought 50 something was bad, this one's 338. Okay. But this does not appear on tonight's agenda anywhere. We said that we couldn't address it because it was too. That's the correct. You are correct. So I don't know. Was this withdrawn or no, did this fall to the correct? On here. I didn't see it anywhere. Yeah, it was supposed to be under a certificate of compliances. I must have deleted that when I entered a new one in. Possible. This one says there is, I don't know if it's a rush, but it says there's substantial amounts of money that are being withheld on their. Uh, mm. So it's transferred already and they set up an escrow account, probably is what it sounds right. like. Yeah. If you can make sure it gets on the next agenda. I will, I do apologize. Good pick up, Mr. Colombo. Yes, because we couldn't vote on it. Right. And I just, when I saw today's agenda, I just figured it was withdrawn or something. Okay. But apparently not. So there should be five yeah. uh, COCs at the next meeting. It was 15 Rumbrook Road. 
I'm not sure what that is. I can't remember. I have a terrible memory. Yeah, GPS has taken away my sense of direction. <laughs> I still I don't think I've heard of that. Well, I've heard of it. I just can't remember whereabouts it might be. That's why I put it on there. I do apologize. That might be a tough one to find. 338. 338's getting old. Well, do they have a date on here? Yeah, 28 plus or minus year past activity. Okay. So that's above a day's feet. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. You go, it's right for the uh, Lunar Bird line. Right okay, before the line on the there. right. If you go if you go towards the Lunenberg, it's on the right. That's correct. Do we have any communications to discuss? Uh, nothing too major. I was contacted by a couple different um, jobs that will be starting shortly. Okay. Um, jobs that have orders or conditions. Yeah. Okay. Um, five. I was contacted um, by 567 Pierce Street, DEP file 1991062. Uh, he just wanted me to come check out the site because he does need to clear some brush um, in order to put in the hay bales and get the machinery in for the silt fencing. Um, it's a pretty minor amount of brush he's going to clear and he's going to make sure he stays as far off from the wetland side as he can when he clears it and is as careful as he can be. But he did want me to see it first before he proceeded. Yeah, I mean, obviously they shouldn't be using like equipment prior to any erosion control, but if they need to get in there, I would recommend on, within a day that's not raining, you know, so they yeah. can clear brush so they can install the silt fence, you know, not on a rainy day, if you know, and within a day, so. Yeah, that's, you know, yeah. I told him he said he was going to call me after so I can come inspect it when he's okay. in the process of it as well. Okay. What was the address of that? Um, 567 Pierce Street, um, file number 199-1062. Is that the long, no. one of the long driveways? Just wondering that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a house near near there, and there's that one. Um, they're two very steep driveways, and the neighbors have always complained about um, runoff coming from the property. Um, I know they did some road work, and there's actually a lot of erosion from, because they changed the elevation the pitch of the road and everything um so i but if you just in your travels just keep an eye on those two sites but you know it's a very sensitive it's a neighbor area. yes a lot of concern a lot of neighbor concerns on that one so i i personally don't have a problem with them using equipment if they need to get to where they need to put the silt fence as long as it's done on the same day without any chance for erosion until that gets put in yeah so because technically you're supposed to have the erosion control before they start anything, but if you can't do it, you can't do it. So, But that's, I'd like to, again, reiterate, very sensitive neighborhood. So, um, Minutes. You have none listed here, but I do specifically remember reviewing minutes. I can't remember the dates. January 26th. January 26th, you sent out. I guess. And you sent out the last meetings okay. minutes. I didn't see those. You did not see those. I didn't see the last meeting. I sent them to okay. your Lemonster email, I believe. Actually, I think I sent them to your personal email before your Lemonster email had been. Well, last week is just yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I didn't see it. Okay. Did you guys at least review the January 26th one? That's the I, one that. Paul that Paul Sento. Yeah, I reviewed that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those I did. Yeah. Even though they're not listed, can we vote yeah. on those? Okay. Can. Uh, if it's not on yeah, the if it's not, I don't know if you can if it's not on the agenda. Officially listed on the agenda. I don't know. Wait. Okay. Yeah, you better make sure it's on the agenda. Okay. If you can send out, because I do specifically remember the last meetings minutes, because I did review them because they came out pretty quick, which I applaud you for that. So, if you could <laughs> just. <clears throat> send those back out to the group okay. and on the on the uh, next agenda just list the January 26th the April uh, March that would have been March 27th and, then, and if we can get these done before the next meeting you can put those on there as well so but at least those two so um, 
New business. Lemistra RMV possible dumping. Oh boy. It was brought to my attention by Mr. Lanza, Lanza that there is possible rubble and construction material dumping at the Lemistra RMV. Um, I walked through the whole site. It was There was a lot of standing water, so it was pretty difficult to get towards the sterling side. Um, I didn't really see anything. I, I showed Marco all the pictures I took, and you know the growth was apparent. There's um, silt fencing in place. I saw where they have the rip wrap in, which kind of looks like it maybe the person was mistaken because I guess they were sent to uh, Mr. Lanza from someone else, from a third part, you know, different person. Um, I didn't see anything concerning. Uh, it's the only thing is I couldn't get to the sterling side because of the standing water, so I did contact Mr. Morrow um, and once everything dries up. He said, you know, we can go out there together and take okay. a look around. But there was, I came back to the office up to my knees covered in mud. Um, and you, you didn't see anything other than the rip area? Yeah, there, you know, they, did, they do have some work going on on the far back side, but I even walked over there. I walked through there. There was nothing that objectified the order of conditions that I could see. Okay. If you could... Um, just I just wanted to let you guys know in case anyone else wanted to. Keep, yeah, if you could just keep it on the agenda and if you can, hopefully it dries out and just maybe take a ride out there before the next meeting, okay. that would be good. Um, on not such a muddy day. When we yes, sir. did the site visit before the project was even built, yeah. I remember going up, there was some fairly tall piles of dirt. Yes. I don't know if those are still there. Um, which if there's you, several plots. If, if, you, look, right. do if you would be yeah. where that the real drop off was, where they were going to have the detention basin, it was just behind that. If you looked at the registry, if you look at the existing building, it should be to the it left should, of it. It should be behind it to the left. Behind it to the left. It, there was I didn't a very see any large pile. Because I went up on the top of that pile when everybody was on the street looking at plans and discussing. Because I I figured that's the highest vantage point, so I could see everything. And there was a lot of wallboard and construction. That's right. That there was I a lot. Right down, I said, I would think you'd clean this up before you'd ask us to come on the property. So I it might be know, yeah. some old material that was there yeah. from way back when. Yeah. But it shouldn't be there. So, I mean, it should be taken out. Yeah. So that was that would be obviously this was before the building was put in. Right. Because to the left, looking at the registry, to the left, there was a, a big dip that was of a concern because yep. that was a wetland area, I believe. Right. They were going to use and this that. was kind of behind that. And I do remember there was and a was lot of construction being. What area? Uh, Correct. And who was the uh, engineer at the time? I forget. That. Um, that slips by. Bill Hannigan, I believe. Yes, it was. Bill Hannigan, right. I Hannigan believe. Hannigan Engineering. So. But that was, yeah, that would, that would have been behind the registry to the left. And it was a very large pile, extremely large pile. Oh, yeah, of it was. Dirt. I'll, I'll call it dirt. That was bad. If that was the first, if there was no properties there, if that, that was the first property built, and the, if there was already wallboard in there, it makes you wonder where that material came from. And when Correct. Was, somebody they, used the, the access road that had been there for quite some time. Somebody might have just went up and dumped it. And dumped a bunch of yeah. stuff, yeah. This is a good place to dump. Yeah. Because well, I made it clear that there. that was there and it needed to come out, but right. apparently so that may have been. they must have figured we're never going to see it again. Yes. And maybe it isn't that. Maybe it's something else. Yeah, maybe if you have time, um, maybe you can go together and show me where that side see dirt piles are. I saw some dirt sure. piles where take they were working. Take a together and take a look at it. I can show you right where it was, yeah. if it's still there. When it dries up. It'll be dry tomorrow morning. <laughs> You're right, Paul. I, I do. I do remember that. So, see, my yeah. memory isn't gone. You're just better well, than mine. Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, if you could just leave that um, on the agenda for next time, and, and if you guys can address that, and just take a take yeah, a look. Yes, I do want to go back out there when it's not so wet. Okay. Uh, old business, seven sixty seven Willard Street. Is there any update on that? Uh, it was with the mayor's office last we heard. So I do know that the letter had been returned. I do know that the mayor um, wants to speak about it. I'm waiting to touch base with him and see when he wants to speak with the commission about it. So I do know we also I think, I think yeah. this, is, this is 767 Willard, oh, which is the driveway with conservation area running through it. Oh, my apologies, sorry. 
that's fine. Yeah, because I get confused all the time. Yeah, we're right next to each other. Make they're two, two. <laughs> right? Um, last we heard, it was with the mayor's office to try to figure out how to deal with conservation underneath someone's driveway. So, if you could just address it with either the property owner and or the mayor's office, if you could just kind of find out. Last we heard, it was just with the mayor's office deciding how to handle it. I think city council even discussed this too. Did they? Yeah, it's been a little while. I, I think the reason they couldn't go to the other direction was because it had to do with like the slope or something of a, a driveway. Like it can't be beyond a certain pitch slope. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and it's already been the house was already built. It's just right. It slopes in the zoning bylaws, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's not that. Well, yeah. It, it's just that it would require a variance if they were to exceed the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they they with the C was just trying not to put an undue. The house was already built. No, I bought it. But so the I mean it's, it's, pretty challenging task to get, that out of Article ninety seven. That's the issue. Right. I mean, right. It's already. I mean, city, whole city council process put that out there. I mean, but. <clears throat> I don't know if there's if there's anything else that they can do, um, you know, reconfiguration of the lot, reconfiguration of the driveway, something that maybe someone hasn't looked at, just that they should be continuing to look at it, uh -huh. um, to get that violation corrected. Can you drive? You can't even drive across an easement, can you? What's that? I'm gonna say, what if the driveway ended before the the? Because it's just a narrow strip. Can, can they what if the driveway ended a few feet before the, the road? <laughs> can they drive over an easement? Like, I mean, over conservation? Yeah. They, they can't have their car over there now. No. They can drive over an easement, trying yeah. conservation so land. It's not an easement, yeah, that's true. <laughs> easement, yes, conservation <laughs> land, no. So, yeah, I, I don't, and I think that was our problem when this first got kind of dropped on us, is, is how do we handle it. And again, Marco may be the best person to get some more education on, just because he's obviously more in tune with how we got to the mayor's office and city council, um, because it's a strip of land right through these people's driveway. That was pre-existing them making conservation <laughs> land, so um, a little difficult. Did you know so. a letter was sent for that? Ended up back in the office as well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you can just kind of look into that, refresh that. Okay. Um, I, I personally don't know how to handle it. If someone else on the commission can. Bridge. A bridge. We could do a bridge. I'm not paying for it though. No. So. I mean, I believe that, that an option was to just move and have move their driveway. They just had to do that. That was well, right on a corner, wasn't that, it? That's, yeah. if, if you, you look, look at the grades, the if you look at the grades, it's not a great option. When you drive by, I mean, it's a drive under from the side. Right. Um, <clears throat> so to, to relocate it off of our piece, you'd have to go out to Willard Street, which you really can't get to that. It's not a very big lot. Yeah. Right. It's just, well, it's, it's the grades. Right. Yeah. Um, but there may be another solution. It's, it's going to require us, city council, and state legislature, if you ultimately took that small portion out of Article 97 and replaced it someplace else. And I don't know what the zoning is in this area of town, but the lot's already half acre, which is a pretty good sized lot for Lemonster. Right. So maybe the lot's oversized to what it needs to be, and there's, there's wiggle room to work with. Um, you know, it's not as easy as just saying we don't need that land. Here's your driveway; you can't right. open that way. So, right. But I think I think there's options that they can explore, and I don't think it's really up to us to solve it for them. But they've got they've got an issue with their title too, and there's a number of approaches I think they could take. I don't know if they've worked with any land surveyors to sort out the zoning part of it. If they can reconfigure the lot. Where is the driveway now? He 
here's Willard right here. Here's the front of the house. So the driveway comes in over here. And this is conservation. It's narrow strip. Right. This is the road. Uh, this is um, Candlewood Drive right here. Right. So this is the piece we own. So there can't be a, a lot of disturbance there. All right. Um, let's put the aerial on. See? Oh, yeah. So you're looking, yeah. literally yeah. You're yeah. looking yeah. at that. And they've planted these trees on the strip that we own? That's, I think that's, that was probably a subdivision requirement, or maybe it was, so it was driven by something else, but that's what yeah. more or less alerted them that they were on the city mm. property. Do you want to see it too much? Yeah. I just kind of, I've only I seen it. kind of remember. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can just. Yeah, so, so, so in terms of what's encroaching, that's really that's strong. strong. Right. <laughs> so, they, whoa, whoa, sorry. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It happens when I touch too much. All right. So, if there's a, a potential, and again, it would have to go through, through us, city council, and the state legislature to do some type of a, a declare it surplus, do some type of a land swap where maybe we gain something that they don't need it's the same amount of area and, you, and, you, and it may and it may have to well it may it may have to include you know kind of the corner too because you don't want a disconnect on right. municipal property right. um, but it's it's something that I don't, I don't think it's well it's not insurmountable I think the approach that they've taken in the past makes it pretty challenging but if there's other ways to look at it. I mean, certainly, I think the driveway is where it is. You can't really reconfigure yeah, that. I see why they couldn't kick this back lot line back this way. You know, just cut it yeah. up there and give us back that. Right. Swap over from there. Right. Hmm. Yeah. See, if the house was positioned where that one is, you'd have no problem. But right. But that slopes way too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you could follow up with the mayor's office and maybe help ask Marco to just point you in the right direction. And that's 767 Willard. Uh, Manusnock Brook retaining wall. Have you heard anything more from DPW on this? You have not. No, okay. I did ask Marco about it and he said he has contacted them. They're trying to figure out what they can do because it looks like it's going to be fairly costly, as well as if they're going to replace a piece of it, they're most likely going to have to replace the whole thing because of the okay. age of the wall. So they're kind of trying to still work that out. Okay. Sounds like you want to say something. Yeah. <laughs> they they got to start doing something in the interim then. Okay. They're not going to do the wall. I mean, we dis we discussed um, some basically some sediment deltas that have formed mm -hmm. things of that nature you know those could be removed to give that channel some more capacity um, rather than just keep that fill in the floodplain right um, I understand that they can't come up with the money tomorrow to replace a wall like that but at the same time you can't just ignore that you've got what's technically a violation there right not that they did it willfully. I mean, that, that would have right. It happened, and it's been, what, a year now? Yeah, so, it, yeah it's just about a year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think they could definitely get in there from, I, I mean, I remember being on a site walk, and yeah, they might have to get a long re reach excavator or some yeah, sort of equipment like long. that yeah. to, to do it, but it can be done. Take a section of um, fence up there. Take a small section of fence, at least do kind of what you're talking yeah. about. It's, yeah. it's possible. So, yeah, if you could, again, get a hotline right to DPW and just let them know of our concerns um, yeah. to at least do something in the, in the short term, you know. Um, there's definitely options. And they should be well aware of them because we've talked about them on our site walk and yeah, we'll with down. Marco. Yeah. So. Any other comments on that? Yes. Okay. Don't take no for an answer. Be tough. Be tough. <laughs> <laughs>
kidding. Give them the spicy ones. Keep them on their toes. <laughs> Uh, enforcement 375 Harvard Street. Um, obviously, we're working with them. I guess my question is: is do we, knowing that they're in front of us for the NOI, do we want to issue them? And not at this meeting, obviously, but kind of a COC on their old order. If my they didn't my do, um, take on it is not until the new ones in place and recorded. And then do it afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. It's fine. Uh, Seven Twenty Three Willard Street. Um, that's the land encroachment. You said the letter was returned to us, and yes. you had a discussion with the mayor's office. Um, I said so. They had contacted Marco. They wanted to kind of have a meeting with us on it. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear. From them. Who is who's they? they? The property owner? Um, Dean. Dean would like to meet with Conservation Commission. Yes, to see what we can do and you know, to kind of res resolve this in the best manner for everyone. Does he want to meet with you or us? I believe with us as a whole. As a whole. Yes. So I'm just kind of waiting to hear back the details on that. Um, I do know he reached out to Marco though. I just found out about that this afternoon. So. I, I think the precedent's been set in terms of what we can do. I mean, if he's up to speed with the other Willard Street, get my numbers all screwed up here. Right? 767. 767. <laughs> there's, there's, not, there's not much we can do there. Right. So, yeah. If there was, we would have done it by now. Right. right. You know, we're up against a wall on this. So if he would, yeah, if he would like to meet with us, that's that's fine. But I think not much we can discuss. <laughs> There's not many options, let's put it that way. There's not many options. Well, listen to what he has to say. Maybe if he's got an yeah. idea. Yeah, if he can come to the next meeting. Yeah. I, mean, I, guess, I think that's the only way we're going to get us all together. Right. It's not like we're all, we can't really meet outside of here anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, because it's a right. public. And I think that's Correct. his plan was I just haven't yeah. spoken to him directly. It was kind of sure. to me, so. The sooner the better. Yeah, so keep pushing. Yeah. And my suggestion too is if he is coming in, you know, similar to the council, if you if you get him on early so he can have this discussion with us and then get back to his normal items so he's not sitting in here for three hours waiting for his item to come up. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, 1145 Central Street. Um, letter returned, it says. Yes, yeah, the letter was returned. Um, we do, I think, so I spoke to Michelle at the mayor's office. We do have access to the legal counsel. There's a form um, I'd have to fill out and then get back to the mayor's office for approval. And then once it's approved, I can contact um, the legal counsel and they would appoint their correct lawyer. Okay. This was for Central Street? Yes. Yeah, well, we had that same question for this Willard Street. Yeah, was like, so I was like, all of it. Yeah. So. Okay. So it just was returned to us on deliverable? Yeah, for? well, some. Um, this one said, Willard Street said refused, um, and this one said unclaimed. I think Marco said that the owner was in Florida, the actual property owner. Oh, the Central true. Street owner? Yeah, so it may be that he's just not here to collect, but he or she isn't here to collect the, yeah. get the letter. Okay. Yeah. So, but there's activity at the site, right? Not really. Not really. No. There's like one van or whatever that's parked out there all the time. Right. It says for sale. So I think so. That's their way of keeping it actively used as a. I think because they got a permit to do car deals, but there's I've never seen anybody at the site. Every time I've driven by, there's nothing. It's like I said, I probably it's probably been six weeks at least. Yeah. I, when I drive by, I look and it's yeah. nothing, no activity. Yeah. So. I drive by twice a day, so on my way to work and on my way home. So. I've driven by it, but I haven't. Maybe I'll buy the van. Yeah. Stop by and say you want to buy the van. So, all right. I mean, continue following up with you know. If if Marco knows the owner and they're not around, or or if we, you know, I don't mind going legal matter, but if it's just we can't get to him because he's not in the state or something. <laughs> right. We might be able to get an email or. Yeah, just something to, to say, right. I can see what I can pick up. Right. Kind of make personal contact to say, hey, we, we got this kind of needed. So. Okay. 
uh, 35 Berkshire Drive. Uh, it says the letter was sent. Yes. So I had sent a letter uh, out to the homeowner you gave us that, right? requesting, yes, requesting the um, wetland scientist to go out and confirm everything was going well over there. I spoke to the owner. He did put a call into Mr. Karen to go back out. He's just waiting for Mr. Karen to get back to him. He did touch base with me again today and said he still hasn't heard, but he called him again and he just asks for everyone's patience. Okay. Is this the letter? Yes. Is there a reason why it was dated August 28, 2015? That was a while back. Typo. Okay. Not a problem. Just dotting the I's, crossing T's. So Mr. Karen's going to go out there and confirm, confirm it, and then I'm assuming send us, send us a letter and a report. Perfect. Just waiting. Okay. Just waiting for Mr. Karen to Do we have any emergency service? Project updates, Army Corps of Engineers, Exchange Street Planting. Our eye in the sky, how's it looking? There is no planting yet, but... Um, I assume it's going to be done soon. I don't know. I know you drive by and live yeah, in that area. Exactly. Stuff. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's fine. Well, he's <laughs> driving all the time. So. I go up in that street about five times a day. <laughs> um, I just assume it's soon. Okay. But, and I don't remember the extent of the plantings. I remember looking at the plan. I remember seeing the circles, but I don't know how many. Okay. But nothing's occurred yet. So they, they, they have blanketing down on a lot of yeah, the part that's exposed. Is that probably going to be the area that's planted? I think. Yeah, so we, did, we, were, we took a look at it. Um, we did a site walk. And they showed me the area. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, there's no planting there yet. That's hopes that they're going to get it in. Um, there's not really someone for me to call on it yet. I don't really have a contact information. There's okay. the, so I'm trying to figure that out where I have contact. Okay. Follow up on that. Okay. We have to stop scraping for us off our cars before they can plant. Oh, <laughs> yeah, winter won't go away. For the sun's day. Uh, how'd the site look when you did your site walk? It was pretty clean. Uh, I think so we were some concerns about there not being any pooling areas that may have been mentioned in okay. it. Okay. Yeah, um, is, there, is there an electronic plan do you have on file or? Not, I can't find what the file would be under. Okay. Um, there's 600 folders and I've been looking. There's a bunch of stacks of Army Corps folders I've been going through trying to find where it would be. Okay. I think we do. I think Marco did send that out electronically. I may have that on my right. computer. Okay. I'll look. If I have it, I'll forward it back yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, because that was a cold water fishery. They found um, trout. Remember they were going to make those pools, right? Yeah. With some granite blocks. Yeah, and like. I didn't see that there, so that's okay. why I didn't know if it was further upstream and they hadn't got to it yet. Okay. I went back to try and find it in the computer system and I couldn't find anything under Army Corps or Slack Brook for it, so I was trying to figure out why it would be under. Okay. okay. Yeah, we, I, I have it somewhere too, so it I'll was see if I can up. find I it. Know I, yeah. I, I know I asked Marco for it at one point, but yeah. that was right around the time our emails kind of got fouled, so. Yeah. But now that we've, <laughs> so now we've fixed it, that. Send it to me. It. Let me. I'll make a note of that. I'll look on my machine at home. Very good. Um, can I ask under project updates? Yes, you can. Let's stay right on Exchange Street. Um, 96 Exchange Street, the condominium project yes. that we approved at the last meeting. Um, they've begun work. There's a substantial amount of excavation um, straight in. I don't know if there's any erosion control in place. They haven't contacted yeah, the office. Contact. Our agent hasn't had an opportunity to be on the site, which I know is one of the orders of conditions. So Correct. they're in violation already. Okay. By not contacting us and starting the work. Correct. Can you contact uh, Kent? Yeah. And let him know that you will be on site and or have some communications with him? because we have concerns that there's no erosion control and we have not been notified. Okay. Did that order go out? 
Yes, it did go out, and I, um, I spoke to Kenny. He didn't receive it the first time I sent it to him, so I sent it to him again. Um, but I haven't heard anything other than that where he asked me to send it over to him again. Did you did you send copies to anyone yet, or I thought we discussed at the last meeting just proofreading that before it went out. Um, Marco had proofread it and kind of said it was fine to go through. Okay. Um, the other thing is, when those go out, there is a ten business day appeal period before they can begin work. Okay. So, uh, you yeah, know, that might not have gone. That might not have lapsed yet. Yeah. So I, I think if they don't have the, I mean, to me, if they, if they don't have all of the siltation in, in place, there should just be a cease and desist until, until, they, assist until, they, until it's been approved. Not until it's done, but until it's been approved. Correct. Make sure the appeal period's over and that you've been on site and approved all erosion controls. I'd be willing to, to go down tomorrow and tell them that, you know, I go by there five times a day. I guess I have to stop. Five times a day and check on it. Um, you should also have a copy of the recorded order. Mm -hmm. So they have they given you that? The book and page and all that. Page, I have be. not received that for this site, no. Okay. I me and Marco we did file it with the EP, but I've not received a recorded order. That's that's on the onus of the applicant. Okay, they have to take it and record that. There's been cases where it, it doesn't get filed at all and then Yeah. That turns out to craziness. Yeah. We've had that with some older orders where it never got filed at all at the Registry of Deeds and then, you know, we're looking for a plan because there's nothing on file anyway and people looking for, like, certificates of compliance on a project that we can't find any documentation. Because it's never registered. But, yeah. Okay. That's all. Any other project updates anybody's looking for? All right. Um, budget. Um, Angela supplied us with. Looks like we have a total available of seventy-five thousand two hundred ninety-eight oh two. And fiscal year eighteen, we have a total of six thousand two hundred sixty-two dollars and fifty cents for fees. Um, I can't remember what the last budget, but that was in the 60, so that sounds yeah. about right. It was like 68 or 67, somewhere in there. So looks like we are on track. And just so you're aware, um, we've had issues before where the, the money disappears. Money can't be taken out of that without the commission voting on it. So Marco helped me get the budget code. He okay. didn't express yes. that to me. Okay. Because that's something we struggle with. So. Correct. Um, we probably, I mean, I'd love to see this every meeting, but at least maybe once every other meeting, if you could just supply us, just so we can, as a group, um, keep track of kind of what, I know you, you're keeping track of it, but as a group, um, we just like to know that the, the money's available if something does come up in the Wetlands Protection Fund. So. Is that the only copy here tonight? Or? Um, this might be the only copy, I'm not sure. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, that's that's good. Do one copy. Is that you put one for everyone? No, um, maybe just email it. Just make it a PDF. You, you can, can yeah, if you just yeah. want to scan it and email it, it's so fine. Much. Thank you. Great. Any questions on the budget? Okay. Uh, agent's report, do you have any report? I think I've over most of everything. Um, Um, I was contacted actually this afternoon by 35 Day Street. They have their erosion barriers in place, okay. um, and they will be beginning work beginning work shortly. Um, I reminded them to contact me at least two days before and put a DEP sign out front. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if anyone else wanted to go view the site. Um, I do drive by that site quite frequently. Um, it's a pretty sensitive site in yes. very very close quarters, so I would highly That's recommend sensitive. kind of. Keep it on your radar of if you haven't heard from them in a while if you happen to be out and about stopping by and because what where they're putting that small addition is extremely close yeah. and there was some replication 
was what yeah, was we, there, was, there was special conditions on that too, so you'll want to read through that. Yeah. There was timing for the fence in the replication area and the building construction itself. I think the replication we asked for first. It may have been. Right. I, I can't remember yeah. the timeline, but you're correct. Very sensitive sites. So. And if that's the case too, remind them that this is the time of year to do that because what the what happens with some sites is they they wait till the summertime and then they cry wolf because you can't do a replication area at that point. And and so the the summer. If they if you know that they intend to get going, remind them of that now so that they can do it now and get it done with. Otherwise, Good. they're looking yeah. at fall to do a replication area. Right. And with two growing seasons, you're pushing your. Right. At least they can get one growing season this year and not having to wait two more years. So. Anything else you'd like to share? Okay. Uh, chairman's report. I have nothing to report at this moment. Uh, our next meeting is April 24th with a filing deadline of April 12th. Is there anything anybody would like to discuss before we adjourn? Um, I sent my email to the mayor's office about my reappointment. Okay. And I copied Angela and I think I forwarded it to you. You as did well. and I reviewed it. Thank you very much. I have not heard anything. So okay. What, what should I do next? Um, may I, I would simply maybe make a phone call to his assistant, Michelle, just and to make sure that it's, 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 she received it and it's in the proper channels. I know my last appointment, that's kind of who I dealt with. Right. You know, I sent it to Dean and she just asked to be CC'd on it. I resent it to her and she sent it back after a day or two saying. Yeah, that's why I, it, I yeah. emailed it to her as well. But yeah, all right, I'll call I would just follow up with her. Call. She's usually readily available to talk, so. Mm -hmm. But I think you should be okay if he appoints you again. Who knows? <laughs> Too but she'll let you know if you just talk to her on the phone. So. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. So I wasn't aware that the actual like, meeting schedule completely when I first started, and I had signed up for the open meeting um, training across the street, which is on the 24th at 6 p.m. Um, I wasn't sure what the process was. Should I not go to that training and still come here? The, the open meeting law training? Yeah. Yeah, I, would, I would say you should probably do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's pretty important. So yeah. I know really yeah. Um, about it, but. yeah, and just if you can, just get everything kind of set up for us in advance. Any last minute things come up, let us know. But that's, yeah. I'll probably um, email you guys like all like my notes and everything beforehand. That's okay. Yep, that's fine. I always run across the street if we really desperately need you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stop the open meeting and we'll go. Probably look camera at yeah. we'll be signing something that night to make sure that we have. Yeah, if we can have the signature pages, because there'll be some things we potentially could be voting on and stuff. Something so. to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. We can chit chat before then and make sure we're all squared away, but that'll be fine. Anything else? All right, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>